Hello and welcome to the BS Academy channel. Now in the third subject of the machine design which include there are three charts and from which the second chart is here for the machine design subject. So in the second chart we will cover the design for the dynamic loading as well as the design for welded joints and the rivet design at the end of the video. All the important equations will be covered in this chart. Let's begin with the first and most important topic for the gate examination from the machine design subject which is design for the dynamic loading. From this topic in every year mostly there may be one question for the reverse cable stress or repeated stress. So as you can see here for the reversible stress sigma m is equal to sigma max plus sigma min by 2 and sigma a is equal to sigma max minus sigma min by 2 and sigma a is equal to sigma max is equal to sigma min and sigma m is equal to sigma min is equal to 0 then for the repeated stress sigma max is equal to 100 and sigma min is equal to 0 then sigma min is equal to 50 then sigma a is also equal to 50 then sigma a is equal to sigma m is equal to sigma max by 2 because sigma min is equal to 0 for the repeated stress then for option you can cross check the three conditions here sigma m plus sigma a is equal to sigma max then second one is sigma m minus sigma a is equal to sigma min and third one is sigma f1 plus sigma 2 is equal to sigma x plus sigma y then remember one thing that design of connecting road is based on the endurance strength because it experiences the dynamic load and the connecting road is made by the forging process then third one is static loading for that the diagram is shown here like horizontal line and if sigma is equal to 100 ampere then sigma max is equal to 100 and sigma min is equal to 100 and sigma m is equal to 100 and sigma a is equal to 0 then for dynamic load the diagram is shown here then stress ratio r is equal to sigma min by sigma max and amplitude ratio is equal to sigma a by sigma m is equal to sigma max minus sigma min divided by sigma max plus sigma min from these four to five equations there are so many examples were asked in the gate examination these are some examples Then after stress concentration, for the flat plate circular hole, the equation will be like sigma 0 is equal to P upon B minus T into T, which is equal to P upon A min. And for the flat plate elliptical hole, KT is equal to 1 plus 2 into A by B. Sigma 0 is equal to P upon A min, which is equal to P upon B minus A into T. Then theoretical stress concentration factor KT and for circular hole flat plate kt is equal to 3 which is maximum then kt is equal to sigma max upon sigma naught then here remember that one note is here the stress concentration factor kt is not calculated for the static load and the ductile material then failure in dynamic loading so note is there in brittle and ductile material both the failure always occur perpendicular to the direction of applied load and strain is not cause of the failure in the dynamic loading then one more note is there applying the compressing residual stress life will increase number of cycle to be performed will increase and decrease the expansion rate of crack for decreasing the expansion rate of crack there are two processes like a short blasting method and auto retest method then the other one is the rotating beam method rr more method is also known as the rotating beam method for that the sn curve is there for the xn curve the curve is drawn for the log of sigma a versus the log of n here sigma a is the amplitude stress and n is equal to number of cycles 
then for fatigue life n is equal to 1000 the value of log n is equal to 3 so fatigue strength s is equal to 0.9 into SUT for n is equal to 1000 or you can say that log n is equal to 3 and in the SN curve the SN curve becomes asymptotic after the value of number of cycles is greater than that of 10 raised to 6 cycles one more note is there when the applied stress sigma ut is less than or equal to se then the life of the component is infinite and se less than or equal to se days and se days is equal to 0.5 into sut if sut is less than the 1400 megapascal then se days is equal to 700 megapascal if sut will greater than the 1400 megapascal then after Solderberg, Goodman and Gerber's equation is there. First one is the Solderberg line. For that the equation will be like sigma a upon a c plus sigma m upon s y t is equal to 1 upon f i s. Then for the Goodman line sigma a by s c plus sigma m by s u t which is equal to 1 upon f o s. And most conservative theory is Solderberg line theory and s y t or s u t always greater than s e. So you can check the diagram for the three lines here. The lower is Soderberg line, then after the Goodman line, and then after the Gerber's line, which is also known as Gerber's parabola. Then for reversible load, note that Soderberg line is equal to Goodman line is equal to Gerber's parabola line. Then for the modified Goodman diagram. The sigma a is equal to p upon b minus d into t and for reversible load sigma m is equal to 0. For the Goodman line SUT will be considered sigma a upon SE plus sigma m upon SUT is equal to 1 upon f for s. Then TM upon SSY plus TA upon SSE is equal to 1 upon f for s. Here f for s is greater than or equal to 1 for infinite life. FOS will less than 1 for the finite life. Then for the combined loading, equation will be like sigma vm is equal to 1 root sigma x square plus 3 into tau xy square. Then sigma m is equal to 1 root sigma xm square plus 3 into tau xy m square. And sigma a is equal to 1 root sigma x a square plus 3 into tau xy a square. Then use Soderberg or Goodman equations. Then for cyclic loading, n is equal to life in cyclic load. Then n1 is equal to life when only sigma1 is applied and small n1 is equal to total number of cycles when sigma1 is applied. Then alpha1 is equal to fraction or percentage of life when sigma1 is applied and damage by sigma1 in one cycle is equal to 1 upon capital N1. Then total damage by sigma 1 is equal to 1 upon alpha is equal to n1 upon n1 where alpha is equal to n1 by n1. Then equation is there capital N1 upon n1 is equal to capital N2 by n2 plus capital N3 by n3 is equal to 1. Remember that this equation you can use for the cumulative damage after that the minors equation is there. The equation will be like alpha 1 upon n1 plus alpha 2 upon n2 plus alpha 3 upon n3 is equal to 1 upon n. Now the value of SE in the equation of sigma a upon SE plus sigma m upon SYT or SUT is equal to 1 upon FOS. You have to take the value of SE is equal to KA into KB into KC into KD into SE dash into 0.5 SUT upon 1 plus Q into KT minus 1. Here K is equal to surface finish vector, KB is equal to size vector, KC is equal to reliability vector, KD is equal to modified stress concentration vector, then KF is equal to fatigue or dynamic stress concentration vector. Here by increasing the K, the AC will decrease. By increasing the KB, AC will also decrease and by decreasing the KC, AC will increase. Then remember that notch sensitivity Q is equal to KF minus 1 upon KT minus 1. For cold working process, 
AC will increase and surface finish will increase because residual compressive stress is are generated in the cold working process. Then in the rolling process, the AC will lesser than that of the grinding process. Then design for welded joints. In that first one is butt joint weld. The equation of tau max is equal to tau 1 2 is equal to under root sigma x by 2 square plus tau x y square. Then tau max is also equal to SSY by FOS is equal to SYT by 2 into FOS. Then T is equal to H by under root 2. Then after the second one is the lap joint fillet weld. In that two types are there. First one is parallel weld and the second one is transverse weld. The angle in parallel weld will be 45 degree and for transverse weld the theta is equal to 67.5 degree. Then for the parallel weld process, tau max is equal to under root 2 into P upon H into L. Then tau max is equal to P by T into L and tau max is equal to 1.414 into P upon H into L. Then for transverse weld, tau max is equal to 1.21 into P1 upon H into L and total weld length is L is equal to 2 into L. Here the parallel weld is more weaker than the transverse weld. So the design is always based on the parallel weld. Then for bolt loading, first one is bolt of uniform strength. For that the strain energy U is equal to sigma square by 2E into AL. Then DH is equal to under DS square minus DC square. Then C is equal to KB upon KB plus KM and PB is equal to C into P. Then PCM is equal to 1 minus C into P and RB is equal to PI plus C into P. Then RCM is equal to 1 minus C into P minus PI. Here PI greater than or equal to 1 minus C into P. And P is equal to P into by 4 into D square of 4 upon N. Then stress is in the bolt. H is equal to 2BN where n is equal to number of threads in contact b is equal to thickness of thread and h is equal to height of nut then sigma t is equal to pi upon pi by 4 into dc square then tau is equal to rl upon n into pi by 4 d square minus dc square into beta and sigma bearing is equal to rb upon n to pi by 4 into d square minus dc square then p is equal to sut upon fos into a and load per unit volt is equal to P is equal to SYT by FOS into A. Then the last topic is rivet design. In that the types of riveted joint. First one is single riveted lap joint. Then second one is double riveted lap joint. Then fourth one is single riveted single strap butt joint. And fifth one is single riveted double sear double strap butt joint. There are mainly four types of questions may be asked from this topic of rivet design. First one is in the example n is unknown. In the second one is n is known. In the third type of question p is unknown. Then fourth type of question eccentric loading is given. So for the, the n is unknown then use these steps like for finding the value of tau, use the equation of p upon pi by 4 into d square n, then ps is equal to t into pi by 4 into d square n, then tearing failure of plate, pt is equal to sigma t into p minus d into t, then crushing failure of rivet, pc is equal to sigma c into n into d into t, then for solid plate, eta tearing is equal to 1 minus d by p, which is also equal to pt by p. And eta searing is equal to PS by P and eta crossing is equal to PC by P. Then one more note is there. Strength of the rivet joint will be taken from the minimum of PS, PC and PT. Then strength of the rivet will be taken from minimum of PS and PC. And eta joint is equal to minimum of eta T, eta S and eta C. Then the second type of questions in which n is known 
then the value of a and e are same so pt at a and pt at e is equal to sigma t into b minus d into t then pt at bb and dd are same so value of pt is equal to sigma t into b minus 2d into t plus tau into pi by 4 d square then value of pt at cc section is sigma t into b minus 3d into t plus 3 into tau into pi by 4 d square here 1 and 3 are the remaining values of the derivative. Then in the third type of questions in which P is unknown then equate PC and PS. That means by PS is equal to PC tau into pi by 4 d square n is equal to sigma c into n into d into t and use the P for the shearing and crushing for finding the diameter and diameter is more in the shearing so in the design it always based on the shearing process then after the fourth one is eccentric loading in which you have to find the two types of forces first one is the primary force which is always opposite to the external loads direction and for the secondary force it is perpendicular to the radial line then the equation for the primary force will be like p dash is equal to p upon n where n is equal to number of trivets for finding the value of the secondary force p p dash is equal to p into e into r p upon sigma r naught square so these are main two equations for the eccentric loading then you have to calculate some examples at your own for the practice of eccentric loading so this is all about the second chart of machine design in which we have considered the design for the dynamic loading as well as the failure in dynamic loading then the Soderberg equation, Goodman equation and the Grubler's equation then after the design of welded joints and rivet design at the end. So we hope that you have liked this video so please if you like this video please do like and subscribe to the BS Academy channel and press the bell icon for the upcoming video of the machine design chart 3 in which we cover design of brakes then design of clutch then design of bearings if you think that this video is helpful to your other friends also who is preparing for the gate examination then please share this video to them also thank you so much